Okay, so I thought I would pop on here and do a quick video about this NVIDIA new driver. This is version 566.03. Now, I am actually myself personally not going to be going through much of this because this is a, a a long video overall, but I'm going to let Google's Notebook LM go over everything that is to know pretty much about this particular driver and actually what some people are talking about here in this Reddit thread that this has only been up for about five hours, so keep that in mind. Um, you know, it. the long and short of it, to be honest, is if you have Dragon Age, this game, and um, you you know want to be current, and also if you want to fix this digital vibrance problem, then that might be a good enough reason to go ahead and download this because, as you know, downloading new NVIDIA drivers can be a crap shoot, and it could mess up more things than it could fix. So. You know, with all that being said, you're going to have to use your own judgment. And remember, if you do install it and it doesn't work out, you can uh, download uh, DDU and remove it and reinstall the driver. But uh, <laughs> good luck. Uh, I'm not going to download this myself uh, personally at this particular moment. And uh, please let us know if you do. So I'm just going to hand it over now to Google's Notebook LM. Enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Hey there. Ready to break down this new NVIDIA driver? It's... Uh, 566.03. That's the one, the 566.03. Okay. I know some of our listeners are really looking forward to the new Dragon Age game. Yeah. And guess I... what? This driver is optimized for DLSS 3. Yeah. Which means daytime. you'll be able to experience it with all the graphical bells and whistles. That's right. This driver is specifically geared towards games using DLSS 3. Uh -huh. NVIDIA's latest AI-powered tech to boost those frame rates. Music to my ears. <laughs> but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right. Every driver update comes with its own set of surprises, right. right? What else is new this time around? Well, while there isn't a huge focus on fixing like specific game bugs, Okay. NVIDIA finally tackled that annoying digital vibrance bug. Oh, thank goodness. Remember how frustrating it was to have your color settings constantly resetting? Don't remind me. That's been driving me nuts for ages. Right. It's like a breath of fresh air knowing it's finally gone. It's definitely a win. However, there's a bit of a trade-off, especially if you're a Corsair user. Oh, no. What did Corsair do this time? Okay. Please tell me it's not another RGB software debacle. Uh, not quite, but close. Okay. This new driver seems to have some compatibility issues with Corsair's ICUE software. Mm -hmm. Specifically, users are reporting high CPU usage when ICUE is running. Yikes, that doesn't sound good. Mm. We're talking potential overheating system slowdowns the works. You mentioned you use a Corsair keyboard and mouse, right? That's right. And this is definitely something to consider before hitting that update button. For sure. Both NVIDIA and Corsair are aware of the issue. Okay but neither seems to be taking the lead on a fix just yet. A classic case of, it's not our problem. Hopefully they sort it out soon. Hopefully. This actually might be a good time to pause and talk about a couple of lingering issues from previous drivers that still haven't been completely resolved. Mm -hmm. Remember that whole disappearing resolutions problem? You mean with DSR and DLDSR? Unfortunately, yes. It's still causing headaches for some users. Mm. You may have noticed this if you ever tried to set up a custom resolution especially when using integer scaling right. for that pixel-perfect look in older games. Ah, integer scaling. Taking us back to those glorious days of chunky pixels. Oh, right. But seriously, it's a bummer that this issue is sticking around. And while we're on the topic of unresolved sagas, what's the latest with the whole Windows 11 version 24H2 drama? Buckle up, because there's been a plot twist. Ooh. Remember those reports of people getting black screens when alt-tabbing out of games? Vaguely, wasn't that linked to both NVIDIA drivers and Windows 11 being a bit temperamental? Exactly. Well, it turns out it was a Windows issue. Okay. And the good news is it's been fixed. That's fantastic. But, but however, there's always a but, isn't there? There is. It's only fixed in the latest insider preview builds of Windows 11. Ah, okay. So unless you're part of that exclusive club, you're still in for a potentially bumpy ride. So the rest of us are stuck waiting for the official patch to roll out. Pretty much. Until then, maybe avoid alt-tabbing, unless absolutely necessary. Or, you know, consider joining the dark side and becoming a Windows insider. Tempting, but I think I'll stick to my regularly scheduled anxiety attacks over driver updates for now. Right. Speaking of which, we've got more to unpack with this new driver. It's not just games in Windows 11 that are affected. It seems Windows 10 is having its own little adventure. You're right. 
This driver seems to have a particular fondness for messing with taskbar transparency effects in Windows 10. Wait, really? Yeah. So instead of that sleek, see-through look, it's just gone. More like replaced with a void. Okay. And in some cases, it's causing the login screen background blur to disappear too. Okay. While that's not exactly a system crashing catastrophe, it's still super annoying. I agree. And since we are thinking about things that could be annoying, let's talk about those still rocking older GPUs. Gotta love those folks keeping the retro hardware dream alive. What's in store for them with this driver? Well, if they happen to be using a Maxwell or Pascal-based GPU mm. and rely on NVIDIA Image Scaling, or NIS, to upscale their games to higher resolutions. NIS, for those who don't speak fluent acronym, is like magic for older graphics cards. Right. It helps them run newer games without bursting into flames. Very accurate description. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, using NIS with this driver mm -hmm. comes with a performance hit really? of around 8 10%. 8 to 10%. Not ideal. Ouch. That's a pretty significant drop. So what can they do? Are they just stuck? Don't worry, there's a workaround. We'll make sure to link that in the show notes for you. Perfect. But it's definitely something to be aware of before hitting that update button. Always good advice. Yeah. You mentioned show notes, which reminds me you should also check those out for more information on rebar. Ah, uh, yes. Resizable bar or rebar. Yeah. A technology with a lot of potential but still a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to real-world performance. As we all remember from our thrilling last episode on PC hardware, rebar is supposed to let your CPU access your GPU's memory more efficiently, right? right? exactly. Mm -hmm. But the reality is support is still somewhat limited. Oh. This driver only officially supports rebar for 41 game profiles. 41. Yeah. 41. Out of the thousands upon thousands of games out there, I know. that's underwhelming. It is what it is, unfortunately. And to make matters even more complicated, some of those rebar profiles are even restricted, depending on whether you have an Intel or AMD CPU. Because why make things simple when we can have layers of arbitrary limitations, am I right? Sadly, that seems to be the name of the game in the wonderful world of PC gaming. <sighs> but let's dive a bit deeper into the specifics of these driver quirks and see what's causing the biggest stir online. So before we get lost in the weeds of rebar and CPU compatibility, let's bring it back to you. Okay. I know you mentioned you primarily use your PC for competitive shooters. Right. Have you noticed any major performance changes, good or bad? It's interesting you bring that up because with competitive shooters, yeah. frame rate is king. Right. But so is input lag. Oh, absolutely. And unfortunately, driver updates can sometimes introduce new input lag issues, even if they boost FPS. That's a good point. I've definitely experienced that frustration before. Yeah. What's the word on the street with this particular driver? Any early reports of input lag woes? So far, so good. Okay. At least for most users. Okay. There's always the chance that specific hardware configurations might encounter hiccups. Sure. But it doesn't seem like a widespread issue with this release. That's a relief. But speaking of potential issues that might not be immediately obvious. Right. What's the deal with rebar? You mentioned it's a bit of a mixed bag. Yeah. What kind of impact are we even talking about here? Okay, so imagine you're playing a game mm -hmm. and your CPU wants to access some data from the GPU's memory. Okay. Normally it has to go through a bit of a roundabout process, uh -huh. which can slow things down. Kind of like taking a detour through rush hour traffic when there's a perfectly good shortcut. Exactly. Okay. That's where rebar comes in. Like yeah. giving your CPU access to that shortcut, allowing it to communicate with the GPU much more efficiently. In theory, this can lead to a nice little performance boost in some games. Okay, that makes sense. But then why is it so hit or miss? If it's a shortcut, shouldn't it always be faster? In a perfect world, yes. Right. But the reality is it depends on a lot of factors. Sure. How the game is coded. Right. Your specific hardware configuration, even the driver itself. Okay. Sometimes that shortcut isn't as efficient as it could be, or the well. game isn't designed to take full advantage of it. So enabling rebar could make my games run smoother than silk. Right. Or it could make them chug harder than a caffeine-fueled hamster on a wheel. Mm, you got it. Ah, the joys of PC gaming. Always a gamble. But hey, at least we know that Digital Vibrance bug is gone, right? Absolutely. That seems to be the one consistently positive thing everyone is agreeing on with this driver release. Yes. No more color-setting roulette. Now that's a quality of life improvement I can get behind. But enough about the good news for now. Right. You mentioned there was some drama brewing online about this driver. Yeah. Spill the tea. Okay, so there are two main things that are causing a bit of a stir on the NVIDIA subreddit and yeah. other forums. Okay. Remember how we talked about Shadowplay and Instant Replay, NVIDIA's built-in recording tools? Right. I haven't used them in a while, but I remember those being a bit finicky, even in the best of times. Yeah. What's going on with them now? Well, it seems like this new driver might be adding a few extra layers of finickiness. Oh, no. We're seeing a lot of reports of Shadowplay just flat out refusing to record. Ouch. What's the point of having a fancy recording tool if it doesn't actually, you know, record? Tell me about it. Yeah. And as if that wasn't bad enough, some users say their recordings are coming out corrupted. Oh, jeez. Like a digital jigsaw puzzle that's missing half the pieces. That's beyond frustrating. 
And here I thought driver updates were supposed to make our lives easier, not harder. You and me both. Right. And then there's the instant replay feature acting up as well. Really? It seems the HUD icon for some folks is constantly on. Oh, really? Even when desktop recording is disabled. Like, it just can't get enough of being in the spotlight. Sounds more like instant annoyance at this point. Has there been any official word from NVIDIA on these issues? Surprisingly, no. Really? It's radio silence on the shadow play and instant replay front. Wow. But the sheer volume of complaints online suggests there's definitely something fishy going on. Well, hopefully they address it sooner rather than later. In the meantime, it's probably best to avoid relying on those features for crucial recordings. Solid advice. Yeah. Uh. And while we're talking about things to be cautious of with this driver, let's talk about this other weird issue popping up. Okay. The NVIDIA control panel going rogue. Wait, what? What's happening with the control panel? Imagine this. You spent hours meticulously tweaking your color settings, Resolutions, 3D application profiles. Don't remind me. It's a labor of love, but sometimes it feels like I'm performing brain surgery on my PC just to get the settings just right. Right. And then out of nowhere, the control panel just decides to hit the factory reset button, wiping out all your hard work. You're kidding? That's evil. It's definitely not ideal. No. And it seems to be happening randomly for some users. Oh, wow. Again, no official word from NVIDIA, mm -hmm. but it's definitely a bug to keep an eye on. So what's the verdict so far? Should I be hitting that download button with reckless abandon or approaching this driver update with a 10-foot pole? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? It really is. Let's break it down. So where do we even begin to weigh the pros and cons here? It feels like this driver is a bit of a gamble with both tempting rewards and potential pitfalls. Mm. What's your take on the big picture, especially for someone like me who mainly plays competitive shooters? I hear you. It's always a judgment call with these driver releases. Mm -hmm. But let's put it this way. If the digital vibrance bug has been driving you up the wall, oh yeah, this update is a no-brainer. That fix alone might be worth the risk. I'm definitely tempted by that. But those shadow play issues and the control panel resetting randomly are making me hesitate. Sure. Those are pretty crucial features for me. I understand your concerns. And since you rely on those features, it might be best to hold off on updating for now. See how things shake out over the next few days. Keep an eye on the NVIDIA subreddit and other forums. All right. Chances are, if there are workarounds or fixes, people will find them pretty quickly. Good point. The internet always there to rescue us from driver-induced despair. <laughs> Absolutely. And remember, you can always roll back to the previous driver if you encounter any show-stopping issues. True, the good old rollback option. It's like a safety net for our PCs. But hey, before we wrap up, let's zoom out a bit. It seems like every time NVIDIA releases a new driver, it's this whole saga of excitement bugs fixes more bugs, is this just the nature of the beast, or what? You're not wrong to feel that way. It's a question that has plagued PC gamers for ages. Seriously, some of those forum threads debating driver stability could rival ancient scrolls in length. It's true. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it boils down to the incredible complexity of these systems. Yeah. Remember, these drivers are like the interpreters between your games, your operating system, and your graphics card. There's so many variables at play, different hardware configurations, game engines, software updates. It's amazing things work as well as they do most of the time. That's a good perspective. It's easy to forget how much goes on behind the scenes to make those pixels dance across our screens. Exactly. So while it's frustrating to encounter these bugs and issues, it's also understandable to a degree. NVIDIA is constantly walking this tightrope between pushing the boundaries of performance and maintaining stability. A delicate balancing act, to say the least. So what's the takeaway for someone like me who's itching to play that new Dragon Age game, but also terrified of their PC imploding? My advice. <laughs> Patience, young Padawan. If you're not in a rush, wait a bit for a future driver update. Okay. Let those early adopters be the guinea pigs, iron out the kinks, and then you can swoop in and enjoy a smoother experience. Always good advice. And in the meantime, I can live vicariously through those brave souls on the NVIDIA subreddit, chronicling their driver update adventures in real time. <laughs> exactly. Consider it entertainment while you wait. But hey, enough about driver drama for one day. Let's get back to what really matters, enjoying those awesome games. Couldn't agree more. Thanks for breaking it all down for me. Until next time.